So, you, uh, you're gonna wait for Donna, or you, you're gonna eat alone? Alone. Oh, you know, yesterday at the service, you two, you didn't seem like you were divorced. Appearances can be deceiving, can't they? Uh, you know, Mary probably, uh, probably hate me for saying this, but sometimes I don't understand women. I mean, we'll take Mary. Now, she's bright. She's beautiful, right? Yeah. Okay. Now, we used to be married, right? And we had kids, and everything was fine. And then there was a trauma, and she went to South America and lost her memory and everything. She came back, and I wanted, you know, to get back together. And she said, no. I have to be sure I don't remember. Then she started to remember, and we got together, and I said, all right, let's get remarried. Come on. She said, no. I really want to be sure. Well, I went crazy, right? So I get steamed, I leave. The other day she walks in here and says, let's get married. Uh, uh, how are you and Donna doing? <clears throat> Not too good. You've been, uh, you've been through a lot. That's what Donna keeps saying, yes. Well, it's true. I know it's true. It's just that I thought maybe it would all bring us together. It hasn't. Well, hey, give it time. Time heals a lot. It does. Mary and I lost a kid. I'm sorry, I, I know. I'm sorry that you, you, you don't feel as though you can talk to me about it. Vince, there's nothing to talk about. You know, Reginald, it's in the past. A baby, it's in the past. I, I make plans, I forge ahead, I keep going. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you want things a little too neat. And maybe you expect people to kind of just get over things. And you probably, Expect that of yourself. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Well, why don't you give yourself a break? You got one coming. He wouldn't give me his name and he insisted upon waiting for you in your office, even though we didn't have an appointment. I understand, but from now on, nobody goes in the office if I'm not here. He can wait here or he can wait in the lounge. He was so insistent. Okay, all right, I'll talk to him. It's okay. So glad you could make it. Am I getting through to you at all? Mary, you're not listening to me. Don't be cute with me, Jason. I take this job very seriously, and it is neither cute nor charming for you to drag me in here like this. I'm dead serious. I need your help. Okay, I'm going to give it to you by the book. You and I have the kind of relationship which would make it extremely unproductive, not to mention probably unethical, for me to treat you as a patient. That is very businesslike. Yes. If you are serious about wanting to talk to someone, I will be happy to give you the names of two or three very good people. No, no, I want to talk to you. I think you could do a much better job. I don't no, want to... a therapist is not supposed to throw things at a patient, but if you don't get out of here... Mary, you don't even let me finish my Jason, sentence. you have to leave. If you are serious about wanting help, I wish you well. But if you're just playing one of your little games with me... Maybe it is. Then you get out of here. I got married yesterday to the man I love, and I get dragged down here today because you're playing games with me? I'm sorry. Don't you sorry me! I don't usually make a diagnosis after a three-minute session, but I'm going to take a quick stab at what your problem is here. You never grew up. That's possible. But I have a, another problem. I don't want to hear about it. Okay. Bye. That other problem, I'm in love with another man's wife.
Mm. What was that for? Well, you've made my day. How could I do that? It's only 8.15. Well, I woke up with my wife. Can't ask for more than that. Except maybe if the wonderful woman would get home just a little early from work. Hmm? Cross my palm with silver. I see if I can arrange. Hmm. Morning, guys. You got it. Ah, good morning, Scott. Oh, good morning, mm. sweetie. Want anything else? No, I think coffee's gonna be good. You can't go all morning just on coffee. Eat some breakfast. How was your party last night? There wasn't any party. Why not? What do you mean? You guys haven't heard? Heard what? Sam had an accident. Oh, no. Yeah. What happened? He was driving his cab, and he swerved to miss this little kid that came out in the road. And oh. He's in a coma. Oh. Gosh, I better get to the hospital. That's a good idea. And the family may be having a problem and need somebody to talk to, and that's my job. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Remember, tonight, early, our place. I see what I can do it. Mm. Isn't it just like your mom? Always there when somebody needs her. <clears throat> Cheryl. What? Come on, what's wrong? What do you think is wrong, John? Look, if this has something to do with what happened on the boat. How the could other day, you do that? You know, John, I really thought you were different. Cheryl, if what you saw on the boat upset you, I'm sorry. But what do you think I am? Some kind of a monk? I know that now, after seeing you with that. Her name is Rosalie. I don't care what her name is, John. I really don't care. Cheryl. Cheryl. Hey, hey, what's going on? Cheryl. What's wrong? Nothing's wrong, Pops. Hey. I could hear you yelling from the kitchen. Don't give me that. Cheryl. Leave me alone. I want everyone to just leave me alone. Cheryl. All right. What happened? I... We just had a little misunderstanding. About what? Yeah, it started the other day when she came by my boat. She came by your boat? Yeah. Why? Actually, she came by to invite me to your wedding. Oh. Oh, so she invited you. Yes, and I told her that I couldn't make it. Days later, she's still pretty frantic. Uh, I'd say she took the news pretty badly, wouldn't you? Vince, I, I don't want to get into this with you. Why not? Because Cheryl is the one that I should be talking to. Yeah, well, I don't want to see her any more upset, you know? Neither do I. I'll talk to her later. That's a good idea. I gotta go. Cheryl! What do you want to see me about? Mm. The little boy that Sam avoided hitting. They've given me his case, and I wanted to know if the police had any kind of information. What do you want to know? Anything. The report that was started here in the hospital last night has almost nothing. <laughs> the report doesn't have anything in it because we don't have any information on this kid. Mary, we don't even know his name. You didn't have any identification? Nothing. There wasn't anything that would even give us a hint about this kid. We have no lead on his parents. I checked in the state computers. There's no report of a missing child that even comes close to his description. Well, what does he say? Nothing. He doesn't talk. Really? Well, there's nothing here about any vocal damage. No, I, I don't think it's that he can't talk. I think he just won't. You know, it's possible that he's just traumatized by being away from his parents. It's possible. Look, I think you need to be aware of the fact that we're looking into the possibility that this child has been abandoned. Now, I put two extra men on the case this morning. If I come up with anything, I'll be sure and let you know. Well, if I come up with anything, I'll let you know. Thanks, Mary. Uh, by the way... Hmm. Congratulations on your marriage. Oh, <laughs> thank you. I was more than a little surprised, actually. I didn't think you and Vince were going to tie the knot until next month. 
Well, we weren't. But then once we had made the decision to be together, it seemed silly to wait. Well, I think what you're doing is great. <laughs> it's no good to be alone. Are you talking about yourself? No, I'm talking about the child. I mean, he's alone. He, uh, he doesn't know where his parents are. And, uh... Well, you found your family now. It must make you very happy. Very. Let me know if you hear anything about the kid, will you? Yeah, I will. Congratulations. Thank you. 